Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic, Kobe Dingwell, and today I'll be doing a review of the new film Nefarious, which just came out uh, this past weekend. And oh my goodness, I just got back from the theater and I I only didn't record a, an instant reaction review in my car because I needed to get home to take care of the dogs as my wife wanted to get to bed. But I immediately, as soon as I got out of this film, wanted to talk about it. Because this film, and it shocks me to say this because I didn't watch really any of the trailers from this film. I'd seen a couple of images in it. I knew Sean Patrick Flannery of Boondock Saints fame was was in the film. That's pretty much all I knew about it. Uh, I, I knew that uh, Steve Dace, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Steve Dace, uh, had written the book that this film was based off of. And that was, again, one of those things that had me kind of, you know, a little bit, uh, okay, I don't know exactly what to expect from the movie. And I can just say... It's a reaction. I was floored by this movie. I love this movie, in fact. And I did not think that a film called Nefarious, dealing with a prison inmate claiming to be possessed by a demon, would be one of my favorite films to come out this year. And yet, that's what this film is. The more I try to think about and process this movie, the more I I just fall in love with it. And... Don't get me wrong, it's not a perfect film, and I'll get to my, my issues with the film in a second, but I just wanted to just get that out of the way, of just kind of like my shock, um, and it makes me look forward to any other future projects uh, that Steve Dace uh, works on as, as a writer. I know that he wasn't a writer of the screenplay for this movie, but he was on as a producer. Obviously, it's based off of his, his uh, initial work, but I am seriously just blown away uh, by this film. But before going into my full review of the film, please make sure you smash the like button, light up the fire button, and smash the rumble button as well. And make sure that you're subscribed to the channel with the bell notification. That way you know every time a video or live stream goes live on the channel. So this film, oh boy. Um, so what, what else can I say? I guess I will start off with the... I'll actually start off with the negatives this time. I normally start off with the positives, but the negative really is only really one area. And the the issue comes up with at the very end... After you've gone through this film, after you've gone through this incredible journey filled with not just uh, genuine horror and not in the cliched jump scare way, though there are a couple of those moments in the film, um, but just horror because of what you've witnessed and just how much truth is being presented in that witness. Um, at the very end of the film, unfortunately, it ends with an interview with one of the characters and Glenn Beck as Glenn Beck. And... As someone who is not definitely, I'm not someone who necessarily hates Glenn Beck by any means. It's still one of those moments where most people who know anything about politics or news or anything like that are going to get to that moment of the film. And I think that's going to be the moment for some of them. Again, if you haven't already gotten jumped out of it because of some of the theological discussions that happen in the film itself. Again, not everyone's going to be drawn to that. Um, I think that that at the very least will kind of throw you out of it because the entire film, I feel like just makes sense. It all works together. It all flows very nicely together. And then you just feel like, okay, and now I just feel like I've been tossed out of it, right? It's one year later and it's this interview going on uh, with, with, with Glenn Beck. And I noticed him earlier in the film, because if you listen on the radio uh, in the very beginning, you hear that the, uh, the, the guy that plays the psychiatrist in the film is listening to the radio and you can pretty much notice right away that it's Glenn Beck who's speaking, but then you actually see him and I don't know. It just kind of took me out of the film a little bit. So that's my biggest critique of it. And I will be honest, it actually did change my rating of the film because I did think it was just that um, that jarring. And I think it went on a little bit too long, right? This this interview that happens at the very uh, end within the movie itself. I think that they could have probably cut that down quite a bit, if not completely, or maybe even used just an actor portraying a radio host or something like that. And I think it would have had a lot more impact and would have been better. But... I digress. That is, again, really the only issue I have. Everything else about this movie is just absolutely phenomenal. I will start off with, I think, my favorite part of the film, which is the performance from Sean Patrick Flannery. Again, I love him in The Boondock Saints. I, I think he was phenomenal in that film, even in the sequel, right? And again, both films have, have issues, but ultimately, he gives great performances in those films, and they're fun, right? But they're not really acting performances necessarily, right? You, you, you come away from that saying, okay, yeah, he's doing an accent, and you know, I'm sure there are many native speakers, you know, native uh, Irish uh, speakers who will look to the accent and, and look at it as derogatory or something to that effect. Again, I, as an American, when I first saw the film, I thought, oh, this sounds great. But again, what would I know? But 
I don't think anyone who loves those films would say that it's one of the best acting performances you've ever seen. But then he does this movie. And the performance that he does, he, he essentially is playing two different characters in the film, right? Playing this character of this demon Nefarious, and then also playing the man whom Nefarious is possessing. And he shows completely distinct personalities in such a clear way and in such a well-acted way that I, did, I was honestly was blown away by. I was not expecting that kind of performance from Sean Patrick Flannery. Now, is it a perfect performance? No. But it is, I think, easily the best of his career. And I would just say a darn good, solid performance. I don't think most people are going to be able to find a lot of faults or flaws in the performance that he gives. Right? You feel the emotion. You feel when the character is sad. You feel that sadness when the character is getting angry, when the character is getting, um, again, going off on one of these, these long uh, tangents. It's just, again, brilliant. Everything that you're seeing on screen is, is fantastic from, from him. Uh, all the other actors in the film, again, even one of the, the you know, Jordan Belfi, who plays the psychiatrist in the film, he was he was fine. He was okay. There was a few moments where, I don't know, I just felt like I could, it just felt like the guy was a little green. And again, I don't know if he's done other films previous to this, but it just, that's how it came across to me. Um, it just felt like he was in a very different league than Sean Patrick Flannery, right? And again, it's kind of just hearing that me say that out loud is already kind of just strange that Sean Patrick Flannery is the, uh, is the uh, incredible acting performance in the film uh, versus anyone else. I, again, it's just a kudos to Sean Patrick Flannery and it's, hey, why in the heck hasn't his agent been getting him roles like this where he can showcase the things that he can actually do? Um, in all in all honesty, that's what it makes you think about. But uh, the other actors in the film, I think, for the most part, do serviceable jobs, but ultimately it's all about Sean Patrick Flannery's performance as uh, as this character. And man, oh man, it, it's phenomenal. As the summary says, on the day of a scheduled execution, execution, a convicted serial killer gets a psychiatric evaluation during which he claims he is a demon and further claims that before their time is over, the psychiatrist will commit three murders of their own. And that gives me to my other favorite part of this movie, which is the actual script itself. As many of you know, I am, uh, I have a master's degree in theology. Uh, I teach theology. And so I went in with a, with a Catholic theological mindset. And I didn't know going into the film or after the film until just maybe a few minutes ago that the directors of the film and uh, the writers of the screenplay are actually devout Catholics. Um, and so that's Carrie Solomon and, and Chuck, uh, uh, Konzelman. And again, I just heard them say that, or at least one of them speaking on behalf of both of them saying that they, they were devout Catholics and I can completely understand why this film, I think had such an impact on me because as I was looking at it from a theological lens, I was looking at it ready to be critical of it saying, okay, great. Okay. It's going to go off on this tangent about, about demons and angels and possession and all these other things. And it's probably going to get some misconceptions and no, it literally gets every single, I don't think I've seen as good of a portrayal of demonic possession of, uh, of talk and, you know, conversation about, um, angelic and demonic demonology, all these other concepts that are just usually so such high level concepts that most people can't, you know, get their, um, you know, gr you know, grasp and get their brains around. This film is able to do it and is able to do it in such an effective way that you just leave feeling like you also learned something. Uh, again, it's, it's again, it's, it's incredible, right? Because the entire time you are, you are being thrilled. You're being horrified by, by what's going on. You're on the edge of your seat because you don't know exactly where the story is going. Right? You hear this concept of the three murders. The way that those three murders are presented as a, as a Catholic and, and especially from a moral standpoint they make sense completely. As soon as you start hearing where they're going, you're like, oh, I see exactly where this... To me, I think that one of the best kind of comparisons that you can probably put this with, and again, it's not the exact same as far as the format of the story, but it reminds me, it, it kind of comes across as a modern day version of the screw tape letters, where you're getting this insight, right, into the uh, demonic. You're getting this insight into evil. And I think it's done in such an effective way. It actually makes me intrigued to want to check out the original novel by Steve Davis because it makes me wonder how much of this came from his novel, how much of this came from him, and then how much of it was maybe changed or altered by these, these Catholic directors. Because everything that came out from the mouth of, of the demon, played by Sean Patrick Flannery, came across in a very, I don't know, it just came across as a very rooted in Catholic theology in, in many respects. And again, I'm no expert, right? Even though I, I've studied theology, I would never call myself a theologian. I would never call myself an expert by any means. So anyone who who has, you know, some study in this area, please let me know if you think that there are some errors, at least from, from maybe that Catholic viewpoint of it. But I think that's also why I love this film so much, because the entire time I'm sitting there saying, yes, 
yes, this is exactly true. This is exactly right. This is exactly how we should be viewing this. And that's why it just makes that ending so much more infuriating to me because everything else is just so good. And the writing especially is just so powerful that, uh, that again, the ending just really does unfortunately let me down. But everything else in the film, cinematography, beautiful. The score, again, the vast majority of the sequences where Sean Patrick Flannery is on screen, they don't have any score. They have no score. Every time he says something where you're kind of expecting that typical like don't like the typical music coming in to to kind of increase the uh, the tension of the moment doesn't happen. And instead, it just lets the background noise and the performance drive all of these sequences that happen. And I, again, I'm blown away by it. I, I was leaning towards, uh, you know, uh, I was leaning towards a gradation of an A for this movie until the ending. I'm going to go ahead and still give this film a B plus. And, and over the course of time, I might even get that changed to an A minus because, as I said, you have the amazing performance from Sean Patrick Flanner. You have fantastic direction by by these two Catholic directors and Carrie Solomon and, and Chuck Conselman. Uh, and again, I believe they were both also involved in the writing of the script as well. Phenomenal job. Uh, Steve Dace, of course, who uh, provided the source material and also uh, produced this film. Uh, again, kudos to everyone involved in this project. Very well done. Again, I am I'm just as surprised as anyone else hearing this of how much I enjoyed this this movie. I mean, you look at that poster and you think, okay, what am I going to get myself into here? And you walk out of it. And again, I could see why anyone would kind of get to any point in this movie, especially as they're going through the three murders, especially as they're going into the implications of the three murders. If you've seen the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I can see why someone, especially not a person not of faith or a person who is very sensitive to some of the issues being talked about, I can see why they might get those moments as a moment where they might check out or they might uh, reject what's, what's being presented to them or they might uh, find some way to criticize. But I think it's done in such an effective way and I think it's done in such a, a, a smart way where I feel like it's going to change hearts and minds in certain respects. It's not saying that, you know, this is not a movie that's going to convert anybody necessarily, right? But it is, I think, one that's going to make you think about things in a different way, where maybe you had thought certain things before, but then this movie is going to bring it to a whole new level, right? Because we, we can think about things in the human terms. We can think about things in the in the terms of the body. But when it comes to the terms of the spirit, when it comes to the impact of events, of, of the things that we can do in our life and the impact that it has on the soul, that's an entirely different level that just does not ever get talked about, does not ever really get uh, covered in, in in film. And this film does it and does it so well, does it so effectively. So uh, a B plus, this is a film I'm definitely going to buy when this comes out on Blu-ray. I, I doubt it's going to get a 4K release. This film's not make, making really any money at the box office. I know that Steve Dace came out and said uh, that he was very happy with how it did better than projections. It did better than what was estimated. And again, I believe that is completely true. Um, but at the same time, it's also still very, very low numbers. And so I would say if you have this film playing near you, if you like thriller horror films, if you like films that deal with, uh, uh, you know, angelic demonic powers, right? Obviously I think that, you know, know thyself, right? If that's something where it, you feel like you might become, come out of it more disturbed, then I would say probably stay away from the movie. But luckily this film does not do those typical tropes. You, you do not have the typical uh, demonic face or demonic, you know, distortion face type type stuff happen. You do have a couple of moments where there's jump scares, you know, in a way, but they're things happening in front of you, not of a supernatural nature. And so, um, as you all know, I hate movies like that. I hate films that deal with these elements because typically they're Hollywoodized. They're done in such a way that you come out of it just either having nightmares or or uh, just feeling like you you went through something that you just didn't want to ever go through and everyone will go through again. This is a movie that, again, I would actually, this is a film where I, to be perfectly honest, would want my students to see some of the sequences, would want to, them to listen to what's being said. Because as I said, what's being talked about at the spiritual level is so powerful that I think it's going to have a major impact on a lot of people. So again, Salabi Plus. Great job, guys. Seriously, uh, phenomenal movie and uh, a film that I want to see again. And I, I did not think myself to ever have said this about this movie based on what my preconceptions of the film were so low going in. I am pleasantly surprised. So shout out to Fedigator who kept hounding me about, hey, are you going to go see this movie? You should really go see this movie. Hey, check out this interview. Check out this. Check out this. And uh, yeah, uh, my misconceptions and preconception of this film was completely wrong. And uh, it's phenomenal. Go check it out. Anyway, what are y'all's thoughts about the movie? Have you seen it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't seen it, seriously, go watch it. 
because even if you're not Catholic, I think that you will probably still find a lot of things to like about it. I actually, when I was, uh, you know, looking into the background of these directors, saw that Sean Patrick Flannery actually did an interview not too long ago with Young Ripa. So I'm going to go watch that very, very soon and very happy to see, right, that this stuff is starting to happen a little bit more, right? Yeah, Critical, Critical Drinker with uh, Critical Drinker with uh, Russell Crowe. I haven't seen The Pope's Exorcist, but I, I've heard that film uh, based on what I know uh, of the actual real-life priest exorcist and what's being presented. I hear that one definitely does a lot more Hollywoodizing of the character, but it's still one I would be interested in uh, checking out and, and seeing, right, the comparisons of what they present and what's actually happened. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you liked the video, smash that like button, like the fire button, honestly, smash the little rumble button as well. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you have a wonderful rest continue to have a wonderful rest of the blessed Easter season and as always God bless And now for a huge special shout out to all of my Patreon, Subscribe Star, and Locals members who are at the Keeper of the Bifrost level and above. Starting off with Patreon with Father Luca Illick, Garrett Searles, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Orange Hat Reviews, who you can check out over at his YouTube channel by the same name, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Rosetta Allen, who you can check out at her YouTube channel at Eagle Writer, and Miss Modern Muses, who you can check out at her YouTube channel by the same name as well. To my Subscribe Star people, we got Matt317, check him out on his Twitch channel by the same name, Fast Reaction, The R, Mr. Roy, J-Rod, The Beer Guru, and The K-Man, and you can check out The K-Man over at xtheboundaries.co. And lastly, to my Locals members, Miss Minnesota Hockey Fan, How About a Hockey Player, J.H. Schwalbach, Brett D90, and the amazing lawyer, Robert Barnes. If you want your name shout out at the end of every video and live stream, check out the top link in the video description below to join the Keeper of the Bifrost level. You also get access to other things like a podcast that I do every month with John the Flick Pick Flickinger, and also I do giveaways for my Keeper of the Bifrost level people and above, and also my Chosen of Valhalla monthly stream. If any of that stuff sounds interesting, especially those giveaways, which I do give away 4K steelbooks, all kinds of stuff all month long, check out that top link. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, a blessed Easter, and as always, God bless.